Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. Unless you live under a rock or in a van down by the river, you probably know that these new M2 MacBook Pros have started making their way into stores near you over the past few weeks. This is the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M2 Pro chip. And while I haven't put in too many hours into this machine yet, I've got a pretty good feel for how it works with a bunch of different workflows. There's definitely a bump in performance over the previous generation, which should be expected, but there are a few things in here that I'm like, why? Today, I want to touch on some of that weirdness, but I also want to get into my first impressions of this machine, go over how this stacks up to my previous experience, at least a little bit with the M1 Pro and the base M2 machines in some specific areas. So if you're wondering about this 14 inch MacBook Pro machine, uh, the benefits it has over the previous generation and what you can get out of the base M2 Pro chip, stick around and let's get into it. All right, so I purchased the 14 inch MacBook Pro pretty much as soon as it was available because there were a few really exciting things about this version to me over the 2021 M1 Pro. First of all, they are indistinguishable from each other. The same shell, same great display. This time around, I opted to get the 14 inch model versus the 16 that I got last time. I think I made a mistake getting the 16. It was just a little bit too bulky for me, so we're going with the 14 this time. Uh, I still think that this mini LED display in here is one of the best that you can get in a laptop. The same great keyboard, but when you start looking at the internals and performance, especially with a few specific use cases, that's where I find things get more interesting, especially with this base model. Some of the more obvious things, the M1 Pro base chip started with an eight core CPU and 14 core GPU. Well, this M2 Pro chip starts at 10 on the CPU and 16 on the GPU. So now the M2 Pro chip starts where the M1 Pro used to peak. That's nice to hear because to get those extra cores a couple of weeks ago, you were probably tacking on another $300 or so. So to get that added performance is nice, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Does anyone remember in the summer of the year 2022 or last year in the common tongue, there was this whole thing about the base M2 machines having slower SSDs. And that's actually one of the reasons why I bought the M2 Air with the 512 gig SSD versus 256, but guess what? They did it again. The base M2 Pro 512 gig SSD is considerably slower than the 512 gig M1 Pro drive, which is kind of silly if you think about this laptop being two years newer. I don't exactly know why you would do this. It just seems kind of backwards, especially for a machine that is two years newer, but I will say the one difference here versus what we saw done last summer with the M2 base models is that the base drive speed is still super fast. It's still gonna outperform the SSD in the M2 Air or the 13 inch M2 by a slight margin. And you're still gonna get like three gigabytes per second transfer speed. So for most folks, you probably won't even notice unless you're doing some pretty resource heavy tasks. Regardless, I was a little bit disappointed that this would actually be slower than my old 16 inch model. And the only way to get around that is to spend an extra 200 bucks or so and pick up the one terabyte drive. But once you get beyond that, there are some pretty great things that I've already noticed. Apple has advertised the M2 Pro as having about a 20% performance gain in processing power over the M1 Pro. And in all the testing that I've done and synthetic benchmarks and general testing, I did find that to be about right on the money when comparing this to the base M1 Pro. In real world use for things like coding, I've noticed my Xcode and JavaScript builds are marginally quicker. Uh, just keep in mind that these projects that I'm testing are overall pretty small. If you're working on a huge code base with enormous compile times, anything like that, you're likely going to notice it more than just the smaller projects and builds that I'm testing. Same with editing video or doing anything that's taxing the GPU. It might be a little bit snappier. It's tough to notice in that regard in real time when you're trying to gauge responsiveness, but where I do notice more is in 3D render times. In Blender, render times were improved considerably. On some files, it took 44 minutes on my old M1 Pro. I was getting through in under 35 minutes on the M2 Pro. And 3D work as a whole feels really smooth. But the fans will kick on, especially if you're doing anything in cycles, but you can barely notice them and the machine seems to stay nice and cool. When it comes to video editing, I saw less of a difference. I wasn't able to test out the same files that I tested on my M1 Pro on the M2 Pro, but 
I did export the same video project on my M2 Pro and M2 Air. That project exported in 12 minutes and 38 seconds on the M2 Pro and 14 minutes flat on the M2 Air. So still worth mentioning, especially since my M2 Air did export video better on that codec than my old M1 Pro. While there is a ton of processing power in these machines, when you're exporting specifically H.265 or HEVC codecs, which is pretty common for most YouTubers or people working on client projects with size restrictions, the export speed is limited to how fast the media engine can encode or decode that video. That's why you probably won't see much of a difference there or on any of the M1 or M2 machines. Regardless if you have a Pro, a Max, or an Ultra, you will see a bit of a performance gain otherwise rendering out other formats, but overall there isn't a ton of difference. One thing that I did pick up on while running all of these tests, I do feel like I can notice a considerable increase in battery life as well. The M2 Pro is a beast, and I think where this excels is handling that really resource-heavy stuff without it sucking back your battery too much. I was able to set this up, install all my apps on here, run a bunch of benchmarks and renders, and I still had battery life remaining over the span of what would be a full workday. In contrast to that, if I were to take this M2 Air, which on its own still does have fantastic battery life, but if I start making it do crazy 3D rendering or video effects, it does draw a lot more battery power than on the M2 Pro. The other day I was doing a bunch of blender work on the air while I was waiting for my vehicle to get repaired and it sucked back like 40% of the battery in a couple of hours. I don't think that you're ever going to see that kind of draw on the M2 Pro. I am going to dive into both the Air and the Base Pro a little bit more in the coming weeks and do a detailed comparison between the two, but there are a couple more things that I did want to mention in regards to connectivity on the M2 Pro. Most of the ports on this are the same as the M1 Pro, the same Thunderbolt 4 connectivity, same UHS-2 SD card reader, but you do have HDMI 2.1 support. I don't think they officially call it HDMI 2.1, but it's pretty much HDMI 2.1, where previously you only had HDMI 2.0. Uh, I did briefly test this out with my TV, but I do think it is a great inclusion. I know there's a lot of folks out there who run higher refresh rate ultra wides and things like that, so it is nice that you don't have to use up a Thunderbolt port for your display if you do want those higher refresh rates. And the one thing that I'm actually finding more stable in regards to connectivity is Bluetooth. The 2023 M2 Pros have Bluetooth 5.3 as opposed to Bluetooth 5.0 on any previous M series MacBooks. And that might seem like an insignificant bump, but Bluetooth 5.0 was released all the way back in 2016 where 5.3 was introduced in 2021, so that is a five-year jump. That's likely gonna result in better overall efficiency for things like battery life. Uh, to what extent? I'm not exactly sure right now, but I did try it out in a few instances where I've had problems with all my other machines. So I don't know if anyone else has this problem or if I'm just cursed or what, but I've always had this weird issue where if I open up Final Cut Pro and pair up some Bluetooth headphones or AirPods when it's open, it gets really sluggish or just crashes and even playback at times can get really jittery or distorted. And that's one of the first things that I wanted to try out and by all accounts that problem seems to have disappeared. Everything in general with Bluetooth seems to be a lot smoother for me. Whether that be AirPods or third party stuff, I don't know if it's just a coincidence or what, but that's kind of carried over to my network connection as well. The M2 Pro does support Wi-Fi 6e now where the previous version only supported Wi-Fi 6, but even with my old Wi-Fi 6 mesh system, I've seen a pretty substantial increase in download speed. Having said all of that, most of this testing has been very surface level, so take it for what it's worth. Uh, this machine is costly, coming in at $2,000 for this base model. And if you are confused at all about which of these M-series chips or machines to pick up, I'd say that any of these M2 machines from the base models all the way up to the Pro or Max machines are very powerful. I will say where it makes sense to get one of these Pro machines is probably if you're more of a power user and you're doing a ton of 3D modeling, lots of work in After Effects or Fusion, really anything that's super demanding from coding all the way to creative work. If you're just editing videos or doing some of the things that I just mentioned on more of a casual basis, the base M-series chips are still more than capable. Honestly, I've been doing most of these videos on the M2 Air, and while things do feel smoother on the M2 Pro and are noticeably faster, 
I didn't feel like I was ever missing out using the air by any means. I am probably going to pick up an M2 Mac Mini down the road here and do some more in-depth comparisons between all of these models and just try and help out folks who are maybe unsure of which is the right purchase for them. So stay tuned for more on all of these machines. I would love to know what you think of all of these machines that were just announced. Are you planning to upgrade to anything that came out this month? Are you waiting or sticking with what you've got? Let me know in the comments down below along with any questions or things that you want to know about the M2 Pro. If you did enjoy this video, you can show your support by hitting that like button if you want to see more tech related content or if you want to have a mullet growing competition and face off with each other in a game of chicken and two Pontiac Trans Ams, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.